I know that humanity is not living in balance with nature. It's not happening. I mean, it's, and actually it's more than a little out of balance. Uh, humanity is actually, at this point, almost going against nature. It's beyond living out of balance. But I also think with humanity going against nature, that there's a small percentage a small number of human beings that are behind this and driving it and imposing it upon just humanity in general. In going against nature, what does that do to the survivability of humanity? It reduces the opportunities for human beings to continue to participate in the evolutionary reality indefinitely. It's bringing a definite conclusion to the ability of the human beings to participate in this evolutionary reality. Because it's going against wow. nature or the earth. I mean, you know, in, I mean, actually, in actual terms, you know, what, what the industrial man is doing is, is murdering the life support systems, murdering the water, the air, mur murdering the life that gives us the ability to have life. You know, and that's really what we're faced with. We can call it poisoning the water or whatever, you know, but in the end, it's, it's, it's like an act of murder, genocide in a way. Who is suppressing this and where is that coming from? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't have any names. Uh, well, maybe a couple might jump to mind, but, um, but on this planet, there's an industrial ruling class. And this industrial ruling class is the smallest percentage of human beings on this planet. And this industrial ruling class, the governments that are created, are created to serve the needs of this industrial ruling class. And one of the needs of this industrial ruling class is they create these governments and, and to some degree these religions, all right, and these economic systems as a way of controlling the mass of human beings that they're feeding off. What's the percentage of people that own 60% of the resources on the planet, then, then we're starting to get to who, who they are. They do have names. And a lot of people we're talking to believe that if certain things aren't done quickly, that you know a lot of people will lose their lives just from natural catastrophes and things like that. Do you believe that we're at that point from what you see? And if so, how do we get out of the situation? You answered that a little bit in your last question, but. Well, no, I don't believe anything, right? Uh, uh, I, I don't trust the word or the concept. I think it's much more realistic to say either I know or I don't know or I think. Because be, for me, when I, I mean just I have to do this, I can't help it. <laughs> because with the belief thing, it means it's like I'm not being, why don't I just acknowledge I don't know? You know, and what, and, it, and it's, uh, and, in, and, and, and think about things. See, I think we should say, think in terms of I think this rather than I believe this. Because I, I think we'll activate the coherency system a little bit. Uh, about the bottleneck and the thing, you know, in the race to midnight, it's after 11. And what can be done about it, because it's, it's not that nothing can be done about it. But again, this comes back to how clearly and coherently we use our intelligence. Because I think that, number one, there's no revolutionary solution to anything that we're dealing with. There may be revolutionary stop gaps, but there's no revolutionary solution. It's about, we're a part of evolution. It's an evolutionary reality, so we, there's an evolutionary solution. I think to head this, to head into the direction of this thing, this bad that is coming, I think that we have time. I think that it can be turned around in two generations but it's gonna take clear and coherent use of our intelligence to think our way through this, not to emotionally react to the bad guys because the, we emotionally react. We end up doing the same old stuff over and over again and, and the bad guys just get badder and badder. That seems to be a historical reality. But also a part of that historical reality is that every rebellion that goes on, our cause may be just and right and all of the good, you know, all the pretty flag stuff, right? But in reality, but in reality, in every situation, we always, we were emotionally reacting by trying to 
challenge their ways by their rules. We weren't thinking outside of the box. You know, and, and but we've been programmed not to think outside of the box because we've been programmed not to like ourselves and be insecure and this and that, so not trust certain abilities that we have. Now, so we have to get past that. I think that it's, you know, it, it's, if we can just seek to be as clear and coherent with our intelligence as we can, and, and, and within two generations, see, we, because that will create answers and solutions to problems that exist that have no answers and solutions. But again, it's about to use, you know, to be as clear and coherent as we can, not emotional reactionaryism, but clear, coherent, responsible, initiated response to what is going on. And, and, and you know, because we have, be, be prepared for this because there's gonna be a lot of, the way that it's headed now, there's a lot of dying coming. Tremendous amounts of dying because the resources are dwindling. That that industrial ruling class, you know, they they want what they, they they want to keep what they have. They're on a very they're on an anti-life destructive course with with the future. You know, so for that industrial ruling class and the dwindling resources environment we're talking about, they need to purge this planet of huge tremendous numbers of the human population, and they're going to do it. I mean, that's what, they're, they're setting it all in motion now. See, so that's where it's headed. And this is why, to me, it's, where, it's very crucial because I don't, I don't think that time is against us. Time is an ally. The real issue is, are we time's ally? Will we take the responsibility to use our intelligence clearly and coherently? Not be overwhelmed by the idea or say, how do I do that? But just head in that direction to think things out. Because. Because when you get to the realities of power, the illusions, authority as an illusion of power, the state and all this and that, all right, all right, then we're always outnumbered there. But if you, if you look at the reality of power and say the reality of power is in clear and coherent thought, then we outnumber them. It's just a matter of us getting to that point where we recognize that, we recognize our own value. We're in a system that has devalued us, and see, and, and, and the trick of the devaluing was it got us to devalue ourselves. One last thing, um, unless you want to have, make any other statement, I have one last question. Does anyone have my, my, all right, I want to make one statement. Please. All right. <laughs> it's about the, it, no, no, it's about the math of the IQ. And, um, we know George Bush isn't intelligent enough, intelligent enough to think up all this mess. But we keep blaming him. So what does the math of the IQ say about our intelligence?